Hi, I'm Scott Vaughn. In this video, we'll look at the mathematical relationship between launch site latitude, launch azimuth angle, and the corresponding orbital inclinations. We'll look at launch sites around the world, the launch azimuth restrictions at some of those sites, and the orbital inclinations that result from launching in different directions at different latitudes. This video is also a lesson in applications of the inverse sine and inverse cosine. We'll illustrate this relationship with animated graphs in Desmos and GeoGebra, and we'll conclude by illustrating the mathematical relation between these values in Kerbal Space Program. Finally, this video is just one part of a larger project that I've been developing. I'm using the game Kerbal Space Program to teach and to learn math, physics, and rocket science. In this project, Kerbal Space Program is both an online lab and a graphing calculator. If you'd like to see more of this project, check out sites.google.com, view KSP Math, where I've posted a workbook that I'm writing covering rocket science topics from the level of beginning algebra to differential equations. There you will find other interactive graphs and videos, Excel files, Mathematica files, and also additional KSP tutorials from another YouTube creator, Mike Aben, on how to play the game and the mathematics involved. So let's define a few terms. Here in GeoGebra, I have a graph of a, a spherical planet or moon, and I have an orbit that's this elliptical orbit traced out here in black. And that orbit remains in an orbital plane. The orbital plane is purple, and there's an equatorial plane also you can see here, which is this plane that's gray right through the equator of the planet or moon. So as the object orbits the planet, it remains in that orbital plane, and the intersection of that orbital plane with the surface of the planet or moon is a great circle. And that great circle you can see passing through the launch site and some other point that I've labeled B. A great circle is a circle that has the same center as the center of the sphere. Now it's the angle between the orbital plane and the equatorial plane that is the orbital inclination. You can see I have orbital inclination up here in the top corner in the in the graph. Also have azimuth and latitude uh, keeping track of those here. So you can see now as I'm moving this point B and adjusting the orbital inclination, you can see how I'm measuring that as the angle between um, basically a, a vector to the north pole and a normal to the orbital plane. So the launch azimuth angle is the initial direction of the ground track of the orbit measured at the surface of the planet or moon from the geographic north pole to the orbital path. This is the same angle as the initial heading I discussed in a previous video on navigation. You can see I've illustrated an example here where we have a launch azimuth of 45 degrees. From That's the angle measured from this direction directly northward to the ground track of the orbital path. And this is basically the same path as the DEMO-2 mission launched to the International Space Station from Kennedy Space Center. I've got uh, latitude at 28.6, which is the same as the latitude of the Kennedy Space Center. In fact, what I have here on, uh, this is flightclub.io, and this is the 3D visualization of that exact flight, and you can see that ground track visualized here. So just like Tim Dodd says the rocket has to go up to get into space, but it also has to go sideways to stay in space. And so that direction at which it's launching relative to north is the azimuth. And finally, of course, latitude is this angle measured from the equator to the launch site uh, at the center of the planet or moon. Positive latitudes refer to points north of the equator, and negative latitudes are points south of the equator. I can adjust this latitude. For example, here is a point south of the equator, a negative latitude. Kennedy Space Center is at about 28.6 latitude, as an example. The Baikonur Cosmodrome is at a latitude of about 45.3, so further north something like that. So looking back at, again, this Demo2 uh, mission on flightclub.io, this was a launch 
May of 2020, and it was on its way to the International Space Station, and that's why it goes up in this direction. And what this video is about, of course, is the connection between the launch site latitude, that azimuth angle, and the resulting orbital inclination. Just clicking on this telemetry, we can see that the inclination of the orbit is about 51.6, which is the required inclination you would need to dock with the space station. If I go back to the flight club main website, I can see an upcoming launch here, this Turksat 5A. Looks like this Turksat launch is scheduled for January 4th or 5th, and this has a very different launch azimuth, because it has a different mission and different required orbit inclination. According to Everyday Astronaut here on his website, he's got that it's headed toward a geostationary orbit. So that is the, it's a communication satellite, a communication satellite for a Turkish satellite operator. This is from spaceflightnow.com. So let me just go back one more time to make sure this is clear that you see the difference between the azimuth and the inclination. Uh, in this case, we're launching at 28.6, like from Kennedy Space Center, with a launch azimuth of about 45 degrees, and we get this orbit inclination of about 51.6. So again, the azimuth is this angle between uh, the direction straight north at the launch site to the orbit uh, ground track. That's the azimuth. And the inclination is the angle between these two planes, the plane of the orbit and the plane of the equator. Now, it's the whole purpose of this video to investigate the relationship between the latitude and the launch azimuth and the orbital inclination. We'll investigate that at different launch sites and look at the equation and investigate that equation, how it relates and how it works. Uh, but before I move on, there's one other thing I want to define. Now, because orbital inclination is an angle between two planes, it can be measured as an angle between 0 and 180 degrees. In Calc 3, I teach angles between planes that range between 0 and 90 degrees. But in this case, we can include the larger range of 0 to 180 to, an inc to include an orientation, either prograde or retrograde. So when an angle is between, when the angle, the, when the orbit inclination is between 0 and 90 degrees, we refer to the orbit as prograde. Objects in prograde orbits move in the same direction as the rotation of the planet or moon. Objects in retrograde orbits with inclinations between 90 and 180 move in a direction that is opposite to the rotation of the planet or moon. A polar orbit has an inclination of 90 degrees, and equatorial orbits have inclinations of zero when it's prograde or 180 degrees inclination when uh, the orbit is retrograde. So this is it. This is the equation. The relationship between orbit inclination I, the launch azimuth angle A, launch site latitude theta is given by this equation. The cosine of I equals the sine of A and the cosine of theta. The proof of this relationship requires an extended discussion of spherical trigonometry, the spherical laws of cosines for angles, and would be a topic for a whole other video, but the resulting equation here is surprisingly simple, I mean, considering the three-dimensional relationship between all of those different angles. So in this video, we'll just look at the applications of this equation with several examples, and we'll find angles of inclination or compute the required azimuth for launches at different latitudes. So let's take a look at this example. Number one, an, the International Space Station, ISS, orbits the Earth at an inclination of approximately 51.6 degrees. So for part A, suppose that SpaceX plans to launch a resupply mission to the ISS from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, which is at a latitude of 28.6 degrees north. Find two launch azimuth angles at Kennedy that result in an orbital inclination of 51.6. Of course, this is the equation that we use uh, to solve for the uh, azimuth angle A. We know the inclination that we want, we know the latitude that we're starting at, so we're solving for the azimuth angle A. So let's plug in the values that we know. Cosine 51.6 sine of the azimuth that we don't know, 
and the cosine of the latitude 28.6 that we do know here I'm just going to take all of these angles to be degrees so for solving for a what we could do is we could just isolate that sine of a factor first sine of a it would be the cosine of 51.6 divided by the cosine of 28.6 and to get a more accurate value, why don't we just do all the calculations at once on the calculator. So we'll go sine of A, or actually what I'll say is A is the sine inverse of the cosine of 51.6 over the cosine of 28.6. So these are, of course, angles that we would not be able to get an exact value for by hand. We certainly need to use the calculator. So let's do that. So first want to make sure you're in degree mode so hit mode and then switch that to degrees if it isn't there already and now we can just type it in like it is here we need the sine inverse we'll do the cosine of 51.6 and then divide by the cosine of the latitude 28.6 and we get about 45 degrees Let's round that off to, well, let's say 45. Now, actually, by the definition of the sine inverse, actually the angles that we're going to get here are only angles from negative 90 up to positive 90. There are other angles that the sine will equal um, the same result. What I'm trying to say is that there's another angle in the interval from 0 to 360 that would actually work mathematically here. All right, so what's happening here is we're actually doing sine inverse of something very close to 0.71. If you just do this division, cosine 51 degrees divided by cosine 28.6, you get about 0.71, uh, which, by the way, is very close to square root of 2 over 2, but not exactly that. Anyway, so you get something very close to 45 degrees when you take the sine inverse by the definition of the sine inverse, which is, of course, what the calculator is following. This is part of the lesson of the sine inverse. There is actually another angle that would give you that same value on the interval from 0 to 360, which are all the possible launch azimuth uh, angles that could, could occur. So here I have a graph of the sine curve uh, from 0 to 360 uh, visualized here. And I, I actually, from, this is negative 90 and this is positive 90, I've graphed the sine uh, over uh, x-axis that represents angles in degrees. And really, basically what's happening is that the sine inverse is defined on this interval from negative 90 to 90. Uh, it, that's its range. And so if you found a value like, let's say, 0.7, if I have y equal 0.71, maybe, you can see that there's a value here of about 45 degrees but there's another value, roughly 135, um, that the sine of that 135, 134.7, whatever it is, um, the sine of that angle gives you the same result, 0.71. So there's actually two answers on the interval from 0 to 360. So we'll do this each time when we take a sine inverse we'll have to recognize that if we want all solutions on the interval from 0 to 360, we can take the answer we get from the calculator and subtract it from 180. That's basically what's happening here, is the distance from 0 to this solution is the same as the distance back from 180 back to uh, the other point. Um, this can also be explained with the unit circle. I think I'm going to leave it at this for right now and say that you're going to just take 180 degrees minus the answer that you get from the calculator as another uh, possible answer. Now, it turns out that actually the only one that's actually feasible for safety reasons at Kennedy Space Center is the 45 degrees. This one is not uh, an allowable launch azimuth at Kennedy Space Center. Mathematically, it would work. But for, uh, you know, what's going to happen is it's risking uh, dropping uh, the rocket stages on the Bahamas if you launch at 135 degrees. So they don't do that. Here's a picture of the allowable launch azimuth angles from Kennedy Space Center at about 28.6 degrees latitude and just about 80 degrees degrees 
west longitude. What we see here is an interval of the launch azimuth angle in degrees that's uh, allowed for safety considerations from 35 degrees up to about 120 degrees. And written uh, along each of these lines is the corresponding orbit inclination that would result with those launch azimuth angles. So if you had launch azimuth angles that were less than 35, those would be uh, directions up in, uh, up in this uh, area here, they would be headed toward possibly uh, impacting uh, the Carolinas uh, or you know other uh, parts of the East Coast. And any angle that was larger than 120 degrees azimuth would risk uh, dropping stages uh, on the Bahamas or other islands in the Caribbean. So this is the one that's actually allowed, and that one's not allowed for safety reasons. Now you might be wondering, how is it that there are two different angles that reach the same orbital inclination from the Kennedy Space Center? And uh, so here I have this uh, visualized at uh, 28.6 degrees for the latitude and the azimuth at about 45 degrees and an orbit inclination of about 51.7 uh, will match the inclination of the International Space Station uh, with that azimuth. But what you could what you could do is uh, wait for the Earth to spin to when the launch site moves over to another point along that orbital, that orbit track, so that you could launch down at, four, at 135 degrees and reach the same prograde uh, orbit inclination. So there's actually two points when the launch site uh, is at this point in the orbit, in the, uh, you know, along that orbit track, or when the launch site is at this point along that orbit track. So purely from a mathematical standpoint, there are actually two angles that you could launch at from Kennedy Space Center to reach the orbit inclination of the International Space Station. Actually, only one of them is uh, practical for safety reasons. Now for a question part B, let's say, suppose that NASA plans to launch a resupply mission from uh, to the ISS from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on a Soyuz rocket. And Baikonur is located at 45.6 degrees north. Find two launch azimuth angles at Baikonur that result in the target or orbital inclination of 51.6. Well, uh, again, we can start with the same equation. The cosine of the inclination equals the sine of the launch azimuth and the cosine of the launch site latitude. But this time, let's just write the equation this way. So that now we're, again, solving for the azimuth at Baikonur that would reach the International Space Station inclination of 51.6. So we need to know, uh, in this case, our target inclination is 51.6 degrees. Our starting latitude is the 45.6. So plugging those values in, we can again use the sine inverse. So sine inverse of the cosine of 51.6 divided by the cosine of 45.6. We get about 62.6 degrees. And if we're including all possible angles from 0 to 360, a complete rotation from north all the way to 180 being south to back to 360, there are actually two answers mathematically uh, that would work. So we have 62.6 and we've got 180 degrees minus the 62.6. So that's about 117.4 degrees. So mathematically we have two answers here, about 62.6 and about 117.4. And here in this image we can see flight azimuth restrictions are from about negative 11 degrees to about 61 degrees. And underneath we can see the corresponding uh, orbit inclinations for uh, launches with those different azimuth angles. So this is the interval
uh, azimuth uh, allowable interval for launch azimuth at Baikonur Cosmodrome. Just like before, actually, it turns out that this one is not allowed because of safety you know, restrictions at Baikonur. Now, I thought this was really pretty neat when I found this website that had this uh, graphic on it, and you might wonder, what the heck is StarSim? That, because I did, and uh, well, looking up that, uh, I found out it's this Soyuz company, um, European-Russian organization that brings together all key players involved in production and operation of Soyuz rockets, uh, responsible for the international sales of uh, launches on Soyuz. So naturally, I want to check these values with my uh, GeoGebra calculator. And so, for example, at a launch azimuth of 60.7, we would expect an inclination of 51.8, according to StarSim. Here's a azimuth of about 60.8, and the inclination is a little bit higher, 52. Uh, not exactly what they have on that uh, graphic on the on their website, and I think the reason here is that my uh, GeoGebra calculator is assuming a perfectly spherical Earth, and of course the Earth isn't perfectly spherical, and I'm not saying it's flat. It is an oblate spheroid. Actually, Earth isn't a perfect sphere. It's a spheroid or an oblate spheroid or oblate ellipsoid. It's bulging a little bit more at the equator than it does at the North and South Pole. And that little bit of difference there could account for the discrepancy between my calculation and uh, orbit inclination and azimuth, at, particularly at northern latitudes, such as the example I have here with the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Any mission to dock with the ISS requires an orbital inclination of 51.6 degrees to match the inclination of the station. This is because even for two spacecraft orbiting at the same altitude and velocity relative to the planet, if their orbital inclinations are different, their relative speeds due to those different inclinations would make docking impossible. The reason the ISS orbits at an inclination of 51.6 degrees is because the first components were launched from Baikonur, where the latitude and launch azimuth restrictions permit this orbital inclination. So for this reason, any mission launched from Kennedy Space Center in Florida to rendezvous with the ISS will leave Kennedy with a launch azimuth angle of approximately 45 degrees, and any launch from Baikonur to the ISS leaves with a launch azimuth of approximately 63 degrees. Now, it is possible for a rocket or satellite to change its orbital inclination once it's in orbit. However, this requires a lot more additional fuel. This is because the total delta-v requirements for changing the inclination depend on the orbital speed and the amount of change in the angle. And when rockets or satellites are traveling at orbital speeds, it takes a lot more fuel to change the inclination. It's better to launch into the target inclination when the rocket is actually moving the slowest at the launch. Missions to the ISS can also be launched from Wallops Island off the coast of Virginia, which is at a latitude of about 37.9 degrees north, because allowable launch azimuth angles there permit an orbit inclination for rendezvous with the ISS. Okay, so what you can see here are allowable launch azimuth angles at Vandenberg Air Force Base over in California at a longitude uh, just about mm, close to 121 degrees west. And this is at about 34.7 degrees north. So the launch azimuth angles range from 201 degrees uh, to directly south at 180 up to about 140 degrees uh, as measured from north. And for those various launch azimuth angles, you can see the corresponding orbit inclination that would result. So let's look at this question here, number two. What launch azimuth angles are required from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California at a latitude of 34.7 degrees north to reach the orbital inclination of the International Space Station. Is either angle within the range of allowable launch azimuths 
at Vandenberg? Well, we can answer this just exactly in the same way as we did the one before. Now we're looking for a target orbit inclination of 51.6 degrees. That's the inclination we want. We're starting at the latitude of Vandenberg uh, Air Force Base in California at 34.7 degrees north. So putting that into the inverse sign, uh, we get 49 degrees as the first solution from the uh, calculator, from using the definition of the inverse sign. We know that there would be another solution on the interval from 0 to 360. And, you know, physically, you can find any direction measured from north from 0 all the way around a uh, complete circle to back to 360. So another mathematically uh, viable answer is 131 degrees, but neither of these angles is within the allowable uh, launch azimuth uh, range at Vandenberg. 49 would put it definitely uh, over uh, Southern California, and even 131 degrees uh, is too close to, uh, to, to land, to, to over, passing over land. Uh, to to pro prohibit uh, that launch azimuth. So it's not practical uh, to launch at least um, directly into the orbit inclination of the ISS. Of course, it's possible to launch uh, into um, an orbit from Vandenberg and then change the uh, orbit inclination once you're in orbit. As I said already, that that would cost a lot of extra uh, delta V, a lot of extra fuel to do that. Now, there was a very important and scientifically interesting launch recently by SpaceX uh, for NASA, which is the Sentinel-6 uh, launch. Uh, it was uh, November 21st of uh, this uh, past year, 2020, from Vandenberg on a SpaceX Falcon 9. The mission was uh, global mean sea level rise, measuring sea level rise, uh, and uh, the, charting the effects of climate change. Its uh, orbital inclination, as you can see here, 66 degrees, um, looks like a little flying house uh, measuring sea level rise. Apparently there will be another one launched in 2025, uh, so together they will measure uh, down to the centimeter more than 90% of the world's oceans, which is amazing. This is the Sentinel-6 uh, Michael Freilich simulation back on flightclub.io and you can see this launch heading southward uh, from Vandenberg uh, or near Vandenberg Air Force Base. We can actually also look up if you click 2D here and scroll down to the bottom you can actually see what the azimuth the flight azimuth is the launch azimuth as it's launching from uh, zero seconds uh, through the first 1000 seconds. So it starts off pretty much directly south and takes a little bit of a turn there within the first 30 seconds to more or less settle on about 152, 53 degrees. Uh, so we can use that maybe 153, 154, uh, something in that range. Let's look that up here. Okay, well, so here I've set the launch site latitude to 34.7 degrees. I have a launch azimuth here about 152 degrees, and that corresponds to, with a perfectly spherical planet, to an uh, orbit inclination of about 67 degrees. So pretty good model for what's going on there with that particular launch and how the azimuth and the inclination are related with this launch site latitude. Now, an interesting consequence of the geometry of an orbital plane is that the minimum possible orbital inclination that can be achieved directly from launch is equal to the latitude of the launch site and occurs exactly when the launch azimuth is 90 degrees or 270 degrees to be retrograde. To visualize why, imagine a satellite in orbit around a planet at some non-zero inclination. The minimum possible inclination occurs if the satellite passes over the launch site in a direction parallel to the equator, corresponding to the point where the satellite is farthest from the equatorial plane. If the satellite passes over the launch site in a direction not parallel to the equator, either increasing or decreasing in latitude, then the orbit inclination must be greater 
than the launch site latitude. In other words, if we imagine the orbital plane as a sheet of paper that contains the launch site, the center of the planet, and all points along the orbit, the minimum inclination of that orbit is when the paper intersects the launch site in a line parallel to the equator. This also explains why azimuth angles of 90 degrees or 270 achieve the minimum possible inclination. That minimum possible inclination being exactly the launch site latitude. Okay, next question. Show mathematically why it is not possible to launch directly into an orbit with an inclination of 28.6 degrees from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, located at 45.6 degrees north latitude, by using this equation cosine of the inclination is equal sine of the azimuth times the cosine of the latitude, and solve for the azimuth angle A. So again, we could start off with the equation and isolate the angle A, or the sine of the angle A, writing it this way. In this case, we have an inclination of 28.6 degrees north and a latitude of 45.6 degrees. So if we do sine of A has to equal cosine of 28.6 and the cosine of 45.6. Now right there, when you divide these, you're going to get about 1.25, and that's bigger than 1. So right there, we know that it's mathematically impossible. There's no solution for A, because the sine function is never going to equal something bigger than 1, no matter what angle you put in for the value of A. Another way to look at that is if you had tried to take a sine inverse, a sine inverse of this cosine 28.6 divided by cosine of 45.6, you'd be looking at sine inverse of 1.25, and by the definition of the sine inverse, this is impossible. We'd say this is undefined. This is because 1.25 is not in the domain of the sine inverse. Negative 1 to 1, including both uh, boundaries, and that 1.25 is out of the domain. Of course, we knew this already. We can already recognize immediately in reading the question that you can't launch directly into an inclination that is lower than the latitude. So as soon as I see latitude at 45.6 degrees north, I know that I cannot reach a lower inclination orbit directly from launch. The lowest possible inclination you could achieve at Baikonur is 45.6, and that would happen if you launched directly eastward at 90 degrees. How about this question number four? Is it mathematically possible to launch directly into the orbital inclination of the ISS from, the, from Russia's Plazetsk Cosmodrome, which is at a latitude of 62.9 degrees north? Justify your conclusion using the equation cosine i equals sine a cos theta. Well, the answer is no, it's not possible. The minimum inclination from Plazetsk is 62.9 degrees of inclination. So the ISS inclination, which is 51.6 degrees, it's not possible without an inclination change after the launch. Again, we can see that mathematically by trying to solve for the angle at launch that would produce the required inclination based on the 62.9 degrees latitude and the required inclination of 51.6. That fraction produces a result of like 1.36, which is bigger than 1. So there's no solution when sine of A is equal to some value bigger than 1. So no launch azimuth is even mathematically possible there. The Earth spins on its axis eastward, and for a rocket to take full advantage of this spin for the added velocity in reaching orbital speed, it's preferable to launch eastward into a prograde orbit near the equator. For example, launching directly eastward with an azimuth of 90 degrees from Kennedy Space Center at latitude 28.6 results in a 28.6 degree inclined orbit, and this is the minimum possible orbit inclination that could be achieved directly from a launch at Kennedy. Of course, rockets launched from Kennedy can reach lower inclination orbits, but only after additional orbital maneuvers lower their inclination. A geostationary orbit is particularly useful for communication satellites. 
For example, the TurkSat launch scheduled for January 4th, or the SiriusXM satellite launch from Kennedy on December 13th, 2020. That's because satellites in this type of orbit remain in a fixed location above the Earth. A geostationary orbit requires a satellite to be a certain, at a certain altitude so that its speed exactly matches the spin of the Earth, and it also requires the satellite to be in a zero inclination or equatorial orbit. While launching eastward from sites close to the equator provides the most added speed due to the rotation of the Earth, launching near the equator is not always desirable. For example, launching into polar or near polar orbits and retrograde orbits on Earth is best done from launch sites at more northern or southern latitudes where the spin of the Earth contributes less to the launch vehicle's initial orbital speed. We've already seen examples where polar or near polar orbits are preferred. These are our orbits that provide a good view of all points on the Earth, useful for mapping and weather satellites, or for example, the Sentinel-6 Michael Fralick satellite that measured the effects of climate change on the ocean. By the way, Michael Fralick is the former director of NASA's Earth Science Division and a pioneer in the science of oceanography. Polar orbits might also be useful for spy satellites, like the Corona satellites. The Corona Discoverer spy satellites were used in the 1960s and 1970s. All right, let's take a look at this number five. Determine the orbit inclination of a spy satellite launched from Vandenberg at 34.7 degrees north with a launch azimuth of 180 degrees. So returning to my familiar formula now, we are given the latitude is 34.7 degrees, and we're given a launch azimuth of 180 degrees. So we're trying to figure out the inclination. Well, the sine of 180 degrees is zero, so it doesn't even really matter what the latitude is of the launch site if you go directly south. Sine of, zero, uh, sine of 180 is zero, which makes this whole side equal zero. And what's the angle where the cosine of that angle is zero. So we'll use the cosine inverse in this case, cosine inverse of zero. And it turns out fortunate that the cosine inverse is defined with a range from zero to 180 degrees, which is perfect for this application because we're gonna have any in inclination always between zero and 180. So we don't have to do any correction or subtract any adjustment for the inverse, right? Whatever we get from the calculator, or in this case, we can just do this in our heads, it's an angle of 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 is zero, so that's the answer. This is a polar orbit. It's a perfectly, exactly polar orbit. How about number six? Suppose SpaceX plans to launch the Starship from Boca Chica, Texas, which is at a latitude of 26 degrees north, with a launch azimuth of 93 degrees. What's the resulting orbit inclination? So once again, we're looking for the inclination, so we're gonna use the inverse cosine. We'll put in the azimuth of 93 degrees and the latitude of 26 degrees. And why don't we just do all of that multiplication and compute those and compute the inverse uh, all at once on the calculator so that we get the most accurate value uh, on the calculator. So once again, make sure that you're in degree mode. That'll kind of mess things up if you're not careful. So uh, cosine inverse. So that's about 26.2. 26.2 degrees as the inclination. This is an image that I got from this paper, uh, Embry-Riddle uh, Aeronautical University uh, paper that you can find online. Uh, entitled Challenges for a South Texas Spaceport it's by Edward Elgood and Wayne Elazer. And here they have a image to sort of suggest what that uh, path, that uh, azimuth angle, 93 degrees, uh, would probably be this path right along here. And, the cha and among many challenges, some, some of those challenges include trying to avoid um, well, all these land masses that are downrange and also uh, potentially um, oil drilling facilities in the Gulf of Mexico.
Okay, so for um, SpaceX launching from Boca Chica at 26 degrees uh, north latitude, uh, a little bit south of a directly eastward path, their orbit inclination is pretty close to what their latitude is. And, you know, that's not too far off from the equator. Um, well, it's pretty close to a launch from Kennedy Space Center um, directly east. So let's just investigate this uh, launch uh, directly east. Um, it's kind of a neat little um, mathematical property we can investigate here. Um, suppose that you launch at an azimuth of 90 degrees exactly east, directly east, so A is the azimuth and theta is the latitude, and we can write the orbit inclination as a function of those two values here using the cosine inverse. So when the uh, angle a is 90 degrees, the sine of 90 degrees, this is just equal to 1, and so it just reduces to the cosine inverse of the cosine, and of course those two functions uh, would cancel each other as long as theta is in the domain of the cosine inverse, which means angles between 0 and 180 degrees, the inclination, I should say, as long as theta is in the domain and range of the cosine inverse. The inclination just works out to be exactly equal to the latitude. Well, that's when the latitude is between 0 and 90 degrees. Uh, those are northern latitudes above the equator. But what about latitudes uh, south of the equator? So for latitude south of the equator, we can write the latitude as a negative, something from negative 90 up to 0. So negative 90 is straight, uh, you know, the latitude of the south pole up to a latitude of zero is back to the equator. And let's imagine again, just launching directly east from some southern latitude. Well, it just happens that the cosine function is even. And so if the angle inside that uh, cosine here is a negative, it's really the same as taking the cosine of theta. And so for angles uh, from minus 90 to 90, you end up just getting I is equal to um, that latitude by just dropping the negative. So the negative just disappears. We can effectively just say that the inclination is the absolute value of the latitude, either between 0 and 90, and it's the same and equal. And for latitudes uh, from the equator south, the inclination is still going to just be whatever the latitude is. You just can drop the negative. Now let's take a look at the Wenchang Launch Center on the island of Hainan, China, located at 19.6 degrees north latitude. What orbital inclinations are possible, assuming launch azimuth angles range from, let's say, 90 degrees directly east to maybe 190 degrees, which is just a little west of directly south? So again, here is my formula for determining orbit inclinations. And in this case, Hainan at 19.6 degrees north, that's uh, our latitude. And so we could take some different launch azimuth angles and compute the resulting orbit inclination. For example, of course, if you launch directly east at 90 degrees, um, you're taking the cosine inverse of the cosine of 19.6 degrees, and so your orbit inclination exactly matches the latitude. 19.6 degrees inclination would be the result. And if you launched at uh, 190 degrees launch azimuth, inclination now is based on an azimuth of 190, latitude 19.6. That's about 99 degrees inclination, a slightly retrograde uh, orbit. So the conclusion is that the inclinations that result would range anywhere from 19.6 to 99 degrees as the result of a, you know, as the result of a direct launch without any orbit inclination changes. Now, looking back at the island of Hainan and just looking at, at the location of that um, launch facility there, I wonder if, you know, it's possible that they might launch at some launch azimuth angles that are less than 90 degrees. You know, maybe not directly north, but maybe 45 degrees or uh, 60 degrees. Is there any advantage to expanding the possible launch azimuth angles to values that are less than directly east, less than 90 degrees? Well, to answer that question, let's investigate uh, a graph 
of the corresponding inclinations that result from different launch azimuths at different latitudes. So what I'm graphing here in Desmos is the vertical scale here is the inclination. So here in Desmos I'm calling it y. That's the um, vertical scale that ranges from 0 to 180 degrees. Those are the possible inclinations. I'm going to use the angle phi here to represent the latitude. So let's just for the moment just set the latitude to be 0 and x along the horizontal, this is the uh, launch azimuth. So launch azimuth can range from 0 all the way to 360 degrees, 0 being directly north, 90 degrees being east, 180 degree launch azimuths directly south, 270 directly west, back to 360. So you've got the full range of possible directions which you could launch uh, in terms of the azimuth running along the horizontal scale. So then what you can see graphed here in this red uh, line is the corresponding inclinations that result from launches at different uh, azimuths. So I can investigate, like if I launched directly south at 180 degrees, then the inclination is going to be 90 degrees. If the launch was directly west at the equator, the inclination is 180 degrees. A directly westward launch is 270 degrees. It results in an inclination of 180 degrees, a perfectly equatorial retrograde orbit. So that's what this curve is tracing out, all the possible inclinations. And you can see that you can achieve really every single possible inclination. Um, this lightly shaded uh, interval here are inclinations up to 90 degrees, so those are prograde orbits, and from 90 degrees up to 180, these are retrograde orbits. So you'd have to launch at an angle larger than 180 to enter into a retrograde orbit. You can also see in this graph that there's always two different azimuth angles that would give you the same orbit inclination. Now I have a slider here for the latitude, so let's look at what happens when you adjust the latitude of the launch site. If I set that, let's say, to 28 degrees, you can see that it's changing the minimum and maximum orbit inclination that you could achieve directly from launch. For example, as we've seen, if you launch directly east, at a latitude of 28 degrees, well, the inclination is going to be 28 degrees. I can set this to 28.6, exactly the latitude of the Kennedy Space Center. And remember, we saw that example where there were two different directions you could go to intercept or to achieve the same inclination as the International Space Station. 45 degrees was one of them. So let me set this uh, inclination 51.6. So if my goal is an inclination of 51.6, I can see that an azimuth angle of about 45 degrees will hit 51.6, but there's another possible launch azimuth at around 135 that's going to give me that same orbit inclination. And as you recall, the only one that was actually feasible at Kennedy Space Center was the 45 degrees because of safety considerations. Well, now let's set this to the latitude of the Wenchang Launch Center in China, 19.6. And now I can see, of course, that launching at 90 degrees directly eastward results in an orbit inclination of 19.6 degrees. But notice anything that's between 0 and 90 degrees for a launch azimuth is going to give you the same result if, as what you could achieve with launch azimuth angles from 90 to 180. And in this particular case, if we increase to say 190 for our azimuth, you can see that that's producing an orbit inclination that's 99, which is just a little bit retrograde, past 90 degrees.
So looking back at that question, is there any advantage to azimuth angles less than 90, say between 0 and 90 at Wenchang? And the answer is no. There isn't really any mathematical advantage there to launching in those directions. No need. Uh, all of the possible inclinations that you could get from 0 to 90, you could already achieve um, with the uh, azimuth angles that were already available in launches you know, out to sea. All right, so I know this uh, video is getting pretty long, past the point where it's uh, long enough, but there's just a couple more examples that I think are neat, and it's just kind of fun to travel around the world looking at these different launch sites and the corresponding orbit inclinations that could be achieved. So how about this? Rocket Lab launches a weather satellite from the Mahia Pen Peninsula in New Zealand at a latitude of 39.2 degrees south. If they have a target orbit inclination of 98 degrees, what's the required launch azimuth? Well, let's uh, let's answer that here. What I'll do is I'll adjust the latitude. So, right, adjusting um, latitude here to a negative. Let's see. The Mahia Peninsula is at 39.2, 39.2, 39.2 degrees south. If the target inclination is 98. Well, we're pretty close to it right there. Yeah, perhaps around 190, 191 degrees uh, launch azimuth. Actually, that's one answer, and there's actually another you could launch at uh, roughly 349 degrees, about 10 degrees uh, counterclockwise from uh, directly north. Uh, but let's take a look at the map and see which one of those is more uh, practical. So here's Rocket Lab's launch complex in New Zealand. And this is the Mahia Peninsula here. And so it seems that it's, you know, very practical for them to launch eastward and south, but they would not want to launch anything north over a populated area. Okay, returning to my basic equation here, uh, in this case I'm solving for the azimuth, so let's rewrite it so that the sine of the azimuth is equal to cosine of the inclination over cosine of the latitude, and in this case then I'm using sine inverse of the cosine of the inclination divided by the cosine of the latitude. In this case I want an inclination of 98 from a latitude. Uh, actually, this is negative, but the cosine of negative 39 is the same as 39, so that actually didn't matter um, whether you put the negative here or not. You're going to get negative 10 degrees from the sine inverse because it's defined from negative 90 to positive 90. Now, an angle of negative 10.3 degrees in this context could be interpreted as equivalent to an angle of about 349 degrees if you measure positive angles. Positive angles, zero being directly north, all the way to 349, about 350 degrees is almost, uh, you know, complete circle. Uh, it's a very north and a little bit west. Uh, 349 is equivalent to that negative 10. But that one is not really an option because that launches right over the entire uh, you know, Mahaya Peninsula in New Zealand. And, and so uh, there's another answer that would be the result of taking 180 minus the answer from the sine inverse, which is minus a negative 10.3. That gives me 190 degrees. That's the one that actually is practical, uh, launching south and a little west. We can see that result here, that 349.7 would produce an inclination of about 98, but that one's not practical for safety reasons, so another option is somewhere around 90.3 to produce an inclination of 98 degrees uh, also. How about this question number nine? The European Space Agency launches missions from the Guyana Space Center in Kourou, French Guiana, at a latitude of about 5.2 degrees north on the east coast of South America. Given launch azimuth restrictions there that range from 349 degrees, equivalent to like maybe negative 11 degrees, to 90 degrees, what range of orbit inclinations could be achieved directly from launch 
at the Guyana Space Center. Well, here, using an inclination of 349 degrees or negative 11, either one, the sign will give you the same result. And I'm solving for the inclination again. So inclination is 101 degrees if you launch at that negative 11 or 349 degree launch azimuth. And of course, if you launch directly east, you'll have an inclination equal to your latitude. So inclinations range from about 5.2 to 101 degrees. Let's take a look at where that is. All right, so here's the Kourou launch site in French Guiana along the uh, east coast of South America. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And here we see Guyana Space Center uh, and an airport here. And th this is not actually where the launches occur. Otherwise, going directly east would put you right over this uh, city of Karoo. No, actually, the launches are from sites up here. Maybe you can sort of make out like these are launch, launch pads uh, that... Uh, you can launch over this undeveloped area here, going out directly east, or up at uh, what was the azimuth there. Yeah, right. Azimuth restrictions from about 349 to 90 degrees uh, result in these inclinations of 5.2 up to 101 degrees from Karoo uh, Space Center in French Guiana. All right, so I said I was going to finish with an example in Kerbal Space Program, so let's look at this, take a look at this last one, number 10. The Making History expansion in Kerbal Space Program includes the option to launch vehicles from the Woomerang launch site at latitude 45.3 degrees north, a site analogous to the Baikonur Cosmodrome on Earth. So part A, what's the expected orbital inclination resulting from a launch directly to the east at Woomerang, that is an azimuth of 90 degrees? Launch a vehicle at Woomerang in KSP and confirm your calculation. So I can immediately say that if I launched at 90 degrees uh, azimuth from Woomerang, we will get exactly the same inclination uh, as the latitude. So the inclination will be about 45.3 degrees. Another one that I'll do in KSP is uh, part B. What's the expected orbital inclination that results from a launch directly west from Woomerang? So... Um, if you have an, an azimuth of 270 degrees, that's a directly west uh, launch. And that'll lead us to an inclination of about 135 degrees. So I'll do that one also, confirm that in KSP. And then finally, this one, uh, part C, find the launch azimuth angles from Woomerang that would reach orbital inclinations of 60 and confirm in KSP. And there's two answers, actually 45 degrees and 135 degrees. Um, I'll follow the 45 degree uh, launch azimuth and confirm that the orbit inclination is 60. Oh, oh, oh.